I feel that place. You know, when you go into that place, I love that. Shit. It, it, it's a, it's definitely an out of body experience when there's been times where I'm on stage and I literally feel my body, feel myself in the, the bass player or in uh, the wow. DJ. And I'm just like, I'm not, I'm just flowing. I'm just like, ah, yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah. a beautiful feeling. And, Everyone's got to experience that thing at some point in their lives. Killer, killer, oh, 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 KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Hey, should we get into it? Should we kick start, brother? Yeah, let's let's rock and roll, man. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Killer Keller Podcast reporting to you live and direct central London or central as you need to be, should be, could be, or want to be. That's how we roll it over here. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk um, for holding it down at any weather. In any event, we're keeping it rolling. Television app is most definitely um, in full effect as well. You can download for your street culture knowledge 24-7 free download from the app store. We are flying across the Atlantic to a gentleman, which I have to say, I, I, I'm taken back, not just the fact that he's up for a couple of podcasts, but the fact that I've been introduced. I almost feel like I'm the last to the party. Soli inside the place. How are we? My MC brother. Yeah, doing well, man. You're always invited to the party, VIP, no matter <laughs> what. <laughs> well, look, seriously, I mean... You know, I, I like to think, yeah, that as an artist first, hip-hop head second, that can often fluctuate and be determined on the kind of mood I'm in. But, but you know, hip-hop and music run totally parallel with everything that I do. And the fact that Soli, bro, I genuinely, the new album's fire, previous stuff fire. What the hell's going on with my life? <laughs> well, good, man. You know, there's a lot of MCs, a lot of music coming out in the world. And, uh, I've, you know, I've definitely kept it to an underground scene for a lot of a lot of different reasons. And as, as, as I broaden and expand myself, I become more of a, you know, mainstream and things like that. And hence being able to speak to somebody all the way in London, you know, yeah, who, who yeah. has a beautiful body of work as well, man. You know, super talented and. Appreciate you oh. taking time out to speak with me. I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate yeah, yeah. that. I think you, both you and me have both been doing our homework on this one, and that's uh, it's it's very gratifying as well. You know, for somebody that's it's a very different pro- proposition, isn't it? When you, you're as an artist, you are you've grinded and worked for such a long period of time, mm-hmm. uh, opening the doors to these kind of conversations almost becomes uh, easy. But refreshing because you know you know you haven't really spoken to, like you say, this side of town, this this area of the world so much, and it's uh, yeah, it must be quite nice for you. Yeah, man, it's really nice to um, you know have my work seen and validated, appreciated, and uh, you know I woke up the other day and I was like, I think I've literally been rapping every day, at least writing a rhyme, freestyling, or thinking about music in my head, you know, tracks. For probably 22 years straight every day every day so i was like 10 10 000 hours i've been doing like 10 000 days you know what i mean uh it's just an as you probably know as an artist it, it there's no timeouts there's no breaks there's no retiring it's music music is a flow it's a currency of energy Real. current and uh, as one of my roles as an mc is to capture that current that co- mm-hmm. you know, collective conscious pool that's flying around i grab the words which one's today which line am i going to use put it in a track, make it, you know, make it pop, make it sound nice. So it's good to be here and, and, and get this feedback, you know. It definitely, uh, I can resonate with that. On those days where I'm just like, yo, fuck this, I'm not going to be f- beatboxing or I'm not going to be great. It's like a burden. <laughs> I feel you, man. It, it can be. It can be if uh, if there's not an outlet. I, and if I'm not getting in the studio or I'm not giving my time, I get depressed, I get low energy. And then I'm like, how come I feel like this? And it's because like the other voice is like, dude, you got to go create, be creative, go make a video, go rap, go freestyle, go listen to some cool new music, you know, or, or get yourself motivated by what inspires me. And 
And you know what inspires me is, you know, hip hop and music and feeling, you know, feeling the flow of the sounds. And It would be know. foolish for you to deny, or us to deny that opportunity because... Mm-hmm. Oh man, who is it? I saw, I watched this documentary, and I'm not like a Bee Gees fan, right? Okay, I'll start by saying that before I go down this cul-de-sac of conversation. Uh, I don't know and nearly enough of this stuff, but um, what's the name of the guy who's the only, last one alive? I forget um, his name. You know, la- who I'm talking the last about. Bee Gees alive. What's his name? Um, uh, yeah, 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 I told you the cul-de-sac yeah, is real. Always, I've been listening to pop for like you. Know. Forty know. But anyway, he was saying he was saying that you know these are these are like you know they're they're ideas from the gods you know yeah, and you have you have to reach out for them when he was saying that he wakes up in the morning at two in the morning and has just like got an idea in his sleep and he just goes straight into. I mean, have you ever had that situation? Um, you know, when I was younger, when I was hungry, you know, as far as like learning the craft, I would I could people would wake me up at two in the morning to freestyle, like right out of bed. Like, yo, so I spit a rhyme. I'll be like, yo, wake up, we're going to sleep in here. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, wow. nowadays uh, I, I try to time it. I have three kids, so my energy can be depleted fast and I can have them knocking on my studio door at any moment. Um, three like, kids. Like literally one could walk in right now and, and be part of the interview. So just a heads up. Uh, <laughs> That'd be but, a three style, three kids, any one time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man, it, uh, to, to have children like this. Um, yeah, never had kids, me. Never been a... So you, you got your hands full. <laughs> Listen, man, it, you know, this may look humbly humbly uh, set up, but trust me, behind what you're looking at right now, I've got more tripods than you can <laughs> think about. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, I don't think this is kids. This isn't kids' territory, really, to be fair. But you know, we you know, Gibbs is his name, by the way. Anyone trying to comment and get down below and tell me the name of the Bee Gees? Well, it's not that they probably would, because it's a hip hop podcast. See, um, where did it all begin, brother? Where did it all begin? For me, um, yeah. you know, I grew up in Massachusetts, and I remember I was about five or six years old, and um, Yo MTV Raps was was popping. This was probably back in the eight, early eighties, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, so. I, I'd get home off the school bus and that was the first thing I would do. I'd run home, I'd get my boom box and I'd put a tape in and I'd record the Yo MTV rap show and I'd listen to it all the time. And then my mom got me a tape called um, Rap Begins Volume One. It had like Cool Herc, Grandmaster, you know, all these old school MCs and I just listened to it all the time. And then I got into basketball and the rest was history. I, all I did was play basketball and listen to hip hop. And they, they went hand in hand for me because I was a point guard, so I had to learn how to like move, you know. And when oh, I sheesh. when I'm when I'm rapping, it's this if if I'm really in the zone, it feels like the same, you know. Like Bob, 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 you're moving, you're and you're hitting the beat like you're dribbling the ball. So yeah. that went hand in hand for me. And then you know the story goes on and on about where I went, how it got me there, and you know once I completely dedicated everything to the music and mm. to the the path. And I've always been into spirituality and see rapping as kind of like you know the ancient wizards that lived in caves and they do like little chants you know yeah. what I'm saying it's all rhythmic and polyrhythmic and syllables and sounds and and I always see it as that and sometimes you know when I'm really in the zone and the flow the rhymes are coming through it I'm not even writing these rhymes I'm just mm. let I'm just like a conduit opening up the portal for them to come through and put and capture, capture, capture them in the song, put them in the song, and then the song goes over here and goes out to the world. And then I go to the next song. So many songs I've written that I'll listen back and be like, I didn't write those lyrics. <laughs> oh, <laughs> where'd that rhyme come from? Where'd that rhyme come from? That's yeah, dope, yeah. You know? so. Oh, I love those ones. Some, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you hard. Yeah. You and and actually, when you do, you come to mention that there's there's so much strong pronunciation, the syllables, the way that you punctuate words, um, yeah. And also, I feel like your 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 lyrical skills are versatile in a an in a legacy sense, whereby you've clearly cut your teeth as you've gone along in your career. It's not like you jumped on a mic like five years ago. You can totally hear the pedigree, you know? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Back then in Massachusetts, because 
I agree with you about basketball. I think it, I think it's more for me as a kid growing up. Basketball was like the rebellious sport. It just mm-hmm. felt like it had more attitude. It was more dangerous. It had. I mean, it went hand in hand with what was going on in the street and hip hop at the time, and even now. Yeah. Um, did did that marry in a creative sense? I mean, did, was there like a moment where you were like, did you do a jam or something at, at a court at a court or something? What was how close did it get as a relationship? The basketball and the rapping. Yeah. Well, I went, I got a, like a scholarship to play basketball in college. So, you know, as a kid, it kept me out of a lot of things that probably wouldn't have been beneficial for me. That was Mm -hmm. one of the blessings of the basketball focus, you know, having a routine to want to get better every day at something. So Mm -hmm. it built these skill sets uh, for me. And then when I got to college, I didn't really want to get up at 6 a.m. to go to a practice and have a coach kind of tell me what to do. And then I was getting more deeper into thinking about the win-lose concept and all these things. And at the same time, I was freestyling and everyone was like, yo, man, you should, you know, you keep rapping. And I'm like, oh, yeah, man, this is fun. It's beautiful. And then I thought, like, wait a minute, I'm going to go, like, be a rap artist. Um, so that's what I did. And that What was- did your parents say when you went to college and then all of a sudden you were like, yo? Oh, my. <laughs> They didn't care. My mom gave me my first rap tape. She used to sing Biggie Smalls to me. She'd be like, birthdays were the worst days. And I'd be like, yo, we sit champ. You know, so they they championed me as far as being a creative artist, you know. And um, wow. and then I, you know, I went and did the whole bag of bond, bag of bond, live on the couch, learn how to rhyme. I would uh, print out other MC lyrics. You know, I'd print out Method Man lyrics just to highlight how he was rhyming. I would listen to Big L and be like, what's he doing? Or, you know, I, I loved underground hip hop back then. So Camp Low, you remember that Camp Low Uptown Saturday Night record? This is it, what? Lucini Paul? Yeah, let's give it. Yeah, I listened to that record a thousand times, you know. I, uh, you know, that's, I was obsessed. I would carry notebooks with me. I would stay for six hours at a coffee shop just writing rhymes and journaling and journaling and writing and looking back, reflecting, it's all part of self inquiry. You know, I was actually doing some deep spiritual therapeutic work. Self inquiry. What's that word mean? How do you, what's that? Inquiry is when you look inside, you question yourself, you ask yourself like, Hmm, how do I feel about this? How do I think about that? And when I'm journaling, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, you know, when I'm writing a rhyme, I'm like putting myself in, memory lane i'm thinking about things like this but i'm also try- attempting to write it in a way that when you hear it it's making sense to you even though you don't know that that line to me meant a whole different thing <sighs> so like if you listen back to my new record hunting teardrops mm-hmm. you could pick any line from any one of those songs and you might think it means this but then i could be like oh no that's actually a story about when i was in school you know when i was 25 mm-hmm. and you'd be like, oh, but, but, but on that album though you do i mean tracks like counterculture Mm-hmm. You know, you're very to the mark because I know what you mean about the, you know, the undertones of what, you know, what certain things can mean to other people to what yeah. you wrote it for. Mm-hmm. But yeah, counterculture was actually a really, st- you know, a very strong track in my mind. You know what I mean? Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. The, the beat on that is, is is fun, too. I like that track. Yeah. Cold, cold, yeah, cold man. tune. Thank yeah. You. Um. Do you, cause and also I might add as well with the album is there is a lot it's it's very rich mm-hmm. in beats. It's very rich in production values. Like with the first few minutes of hearing it, I was like, Jesus this is so well produced. Yeah, I, I uh, collaborate and I've been working with this gentleman named Bill Bless for over a decade. Um and we bounce ideas back and forth. He sends me loops, I send him rhymes and uh add this, take that out, tweak that. What about this and this new record hunting teardrops he brought in a lot of earthly elements crickets birds yeah bullies. that kind of panpipe flute thing that was going on a couple of times yeah i know yeah. what you mean there's sitars there's kalimbas i got a hand pan i play you know so kind of keeping it earthy but at the same time electronic um bill bless is really well known in the edm scene he used to go by Soteg, son of the electric ghost he's on <laughs> many festivals um and, you know, we're both, we're just older dads now. So we're just like, yo, man, we just go with the flow. If we're not feeling one, we move it over. We keep working. And we already have a full second record ready, mixed, mastered, ready to go. Once Hunting, what? Teardrops, once hunting teardrops is out, 
I got another one, 18 tracks. I'm probably going to pick the top 12. I got some beautiful guest uh, female singers on it. And that one's ready. It's mixed ready. I got to pick a name for it and then get some artwork for it. And then wow, we'll we're, we're, we're we're keep going. We keep moving. Yeah. That's crazy. Each one of these tunes on this album could be a, a single. Like I say single loosely. You know what I mean, though. You know, you could put oh, a I music video to it. Yeah, no. And, and that's kind of what I'm doing for this Hunting Teardrops. I put out Ghost Steps first with a, with a lyric video. And then I did uh, Times Game mm. within like a video with me performing. And then... Um, I got this new one called Fireside that just came out. Mm, and mm. Another cool lyric video for that one. Hopefully, it's ready in the next day or two. I'll, I'll put that out. And then I did that. Vision, Vision Board was dope. That did. did oh, you like Vision that one? Board. Yeah. Cool. Super cold. You know what? what one, what's so interesting to me is um, from the feedback I've been getting that people, the, the people that have heard the full record, they'll they'll tell me like, "Oh, this is my favorite track," and I'll be like, Psh, "I didn't even think that." Mm-hmm. someone's favorite you know that, that's how this times game one became a single because somebody i know was like oh times game is, is the jam man i'm like oh sweet let's make it a single put some artwork to it and make a video yeah um, man you spoil the t- stuck in it as well that is a tune the uh, it's the beat <gasps> yeah and the chorus the repetitive it's kind of heavy yeah, yeah that, i like that one i like that one for sure and there was a couple of moments in the album too where i liked the the you had this like lower octave uh, vocal on a couple of tunes that went with your mid range, and it kind of had a dissonant. I don't know. It, it, it kind of. It, I know you're more. I know you're more old school than this, but it, like a Kendrick Lamar kind of thing, where there was like a double v- vocal layer, but one was low and one was mid, rather than the high in the mid or the low in the mid high. You were going like, and it just felt like it was really like kind of, there, there's a real undertone to the to mm-hmm. the vocal. Yeah, I, I always do about four vocal takes to get different octave layers because you know mm. you never know what happens when you um, put one on top of the other. And in yeah. that new song I put out called Fireside, there's a chant in the beginning, um, and that's not a, that's not one person. That's about four or five different chants on top layered and you know panned in a certain way so they sound like one person, but. It's not. It's not one person. It's a bunch of chants. So that's crazy. Yeah, being yeah, crazy. The, uh, thinking like that. You got to think out the box. Yes. Yeah. Particularly when you're working in the box, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Where are you at the moment? You in LA? Uh, no, we uh, we are living. My wife and I and family. We moved up Northern Cali. We were in LA for about ten years. My wife was there for twenty. So uh, you know, we we decided to kind of get up in the woods with the kids. Yeah, I'll, how did you get down? That, how did how did that transition from uh, Massachusetts to the West to get, yeah. California? How it's did a, that? It's a, it's a long journey, man. Um, and it was all <laughs> it, was, it was all through music. And I know I know we only have thirty minutes here. Um, I could attempt to give you a quick five minute recap if you want. You know, your podcast, baby. You yeah. go for self. You know, all you can always uh, for the people watching who never have heard of Solai, you can check out my website, solai.com. Just, Trust me, this is a whole new audience. All uh, right, um, yeah. Bells uh, and whistles, so, man. Solai.com just uh, just launching uh, this on Friday, this Friday. So I think the podcast, this interview comes out to Friday today in the future. So check out solai.com. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram at Solai. And, um, and it's yeah. by magic. It's Friday. We're here. Yeah, I'm going to give you the quick one moment that kind of catapulted me. This happened about 20 years ago. Um, Mm -hmm. My brother at the time had a three-year-old baby, and I was in his apartment, and I told him, I'm going to make some money through my music. I'm going to take you on a cruise ship, man. And I left the apartment. About a few months later, I get the call that he passed away, committed, committed suicide, and... Uh, this was up in uh, you know the Massachusetts um, area. I think it was Vermont, New Hampshire at the time. And um, I went down to Florida. I just was like, all right, I'm going far away from here. I went down to Florida, hmm. and um, I'm, I'm skipping a bunch of pieces. But uh, I was at the time I was working at Whole Foods as a vitamin salesman because I love nutrition, I love health, and you know positivity. And I was just like, I need a job working at this vitamin shop at Whole Foods, and my roommate at the time was a producer by the name of Sam Sleepyhead. He was 18. I barely knew him. He heard me freestyle once and he called me and was like, hey man, 
Remember, I'm Sam. I was in the car with you. I heard you freestyling. I want to make a record for you. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, well, I'm in Florida. He's like, you need a roommate? And I was like, sure, dude. So he came down on a Greyhound, barely knew this guy, met him once, became my roommate. And uh, we make we make a record called Intergalactic Vibes. And I and he tells me about this thing called Jam Cruise, which is this cruise ship with all these incredible artists on it. Um, mm. A lot of big name uh, jam artists like Les Claypool and Bella Fleck, Michael Franti. Okay. So, and at the time, I never heard. I haven't. I didn't know any of those artists. I was right. a straight hip hop guy, like yeah. too, you know, only only hip hop music. And uh, so I go to I go to work the next day after Sam tells me about this thing called Jam Cruise. I'm working in the vitamin department. This guy walks down the hot, the the aisle. He's got a cough. I'm like, oh, it's, you know, can I help you? He's like, yeah, you know, I got this cough. He has a T-shirt on. It says Jam Cruise. And I'm like, oh, dude. My roommate was telling me about Jam Cruise yesterday. He's like, oh, that's my thing. And I'm like, oh. He's like, yeah, that's my, that's my, uh, I put that on, Cloud9 Productions. And I'm like, wow. And I go, I'm a, I'm a MC. Here's a flyer for this new CD I made. He goes, oh, you should go on Sonic Bids and enter this contest. They're looking for, you know, DJ MCs, live guitar players to, to win a spot on the cruise ship. Wow. So I enter it, fill up the Sonic Bids. About two weeks later, I get the phone call while I'm at Whole Foods. Nah. Yeah, you've been selected as a winner for the jam cruise out of thousands of people. And I'm just like, what? So the next thing what? you know, I'm on this cruise ship performing. Uh, I meet all these Michael Fronti's like, yo, come rap with me. I meet this, uh, this other EDM uh, artist. who's like, come tour with me. Uh, I'm in Jamaica at Bob Marley's house crying. Like uh, my mind is like, what? And, and literally from that day I was, I, you know, full music full touring around the world putting records out you know so dude that's some serendipity fate meets yeah. I, I remember it was about 2 a.m on the cruise ship i'm at the edge of the boat i don't know if you've ever been on a cruise this is my first time and it's just like the ocean's moving in front of you stars i'm sitting there and i'm just thinking to my brother like i'm here man i did it you're, you're yeah i did me. it for you kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. I'm on this, I'm on this cruise ship, dude. Like, how does this, how's this even possible? Uh, and yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's just the quick, like, you know, and then at one point I was the lead singer for a San Francisco band, uh, toured around America. We did a tour in Australia and then, Boulevard. Yeah. Yeah. Boulevard. That's right. That's right. Then, um, parted ways with Boulevard to focus on my solo career. And that was probably 12 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, you know, music will music will guide you and take you on a journey if you're open to it and your and your intentions pure. You know, my intention yeah. always has been to be creative, be the best MC I can be, be you know, be open, be an open channel for the message and be positive. You know, I don't curse in my swears just because, you know, I'm not against cursing and swearing, you know. But when I'm recording something, I have the option of whether to put it in there or not. I typically will not put it. It's a really good point, actually. Because as, you know, as verses go on, on, I didn't notice that swearing wasn't there. But if you were to have asked me, is it aggressive? Is it, does it have the same attack? I would have said, yeah. 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 So exactly. I guess that's the right, in, that's the right, that's right what you want to hear, right? You want to hear that it's got that's the same aggression, but there's no, there's more articulation than just a swear word. Yeah, I, uh even if even when I was you know f mostly a freestyle MC, I could freestyle for twenty four hours straight without cursing. And I, wow. I never had a fallback that was like a curse because I always was just trying to be more uh, intentional, intentional with my words. This man's got a stack of books behind him. Let's see what's going on here. The wordsmith. Yeah, that you know I love reading as well, but that's mostly I'm not going to take credit for my wife's. Uh, my wife's collection. She she can actually read all these. I, I it takes me a long time to read a book. I listen to them in audio, but <laughs> yeah, I'm an audio fan. Me, yeah, man. I'm all about that. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's crazy. So, so just jumping back into the Boulevard thing, like because I've noticed you've got like a hardcore devotee of fans. Like you, they they follow you. Did a lot of that come through the, the growth of, you know, being aff affiliated and associated with the different projects like Boulevard, for instance? Or was this, did this come from like pounding at the door with your own individual yeah. releases? 
I was only with Boulevard for about a year and a half, maybe gotcha. maybe two at the most. Uh, we put one record out. Um, when I met them, they were already um, a three-piece electronic band. Right. Freestyled with them at a couple shows, went well. We wrote a record, we did a tour, and that was about it. That was about it. Um, we had another record ready to go, but when I parted ways with the band, um, never went out. So I was I was uh, so live for at least a decade before I met Boulevard. Right. I was touring with some EDM artists, uh, the Glitch Mob, Bass Neck. That's my boys. Hey, hold tight. I love those guys. They they yeah. would have me up on the mic, man. And uh, oh man, those are my people. Every, everywhere from you know. Um, Jackson Hole, Wyoming to Burning Man. I was doing concerts. Uh, when was that? That must have been re reasonably. Uh, probably 2007, 8, 9, 2006, yeah. 7, 8, 9. About three or four years. Uh, and with, with Bass Nectar at the time, I did about 200 shows. And every single show I did with him was improv, freestyle. It Boy. was the, to the point where uh, we're on stage, massive crowd. And everyone's dancing and he'd step on my foot and then I would know it's a four count. I was literally, literally like a lyrical foot pedal. That's so, I love that. As soon as he stepped on my that. foot, I knew the beat was about to drop and I was going to just start rhyming. And when I would freestyle at those events, everyone's just loose and partying. So it's not really about articulating as much as it is being an instrument. That's what, right. what's, what's the count? What's the beat? Where's the snares at? Okay, let's play. I mean, like, you oh never mess God. up. I'm like, I can't mess up because you just, don't know a rhyme, you just go into some other sound or some other story or some other place. So. You're in a flow state, bro. Yeah. And nothing can take you off that. So once you're on, man, I've been there so many times with beatboxing. I totally and utterly feel, I feel that place. You know, when you go into that place, I love that shit. It, it, it's, a, it's definitely an outer body experience when there's been times where I'm on stage and I literally feel my body, feel myself in the bass player or in the, uh, the wow. DJ. And I'm just like, I'm not, I'm just flowing. I'm just like, ah, yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah. a beautiful feeling. And Everyone's got to experience that thing at some point in their lives. That's what. I <laughs> well, I, I think people do depending on their, their journey. If they're painters, if they're book writers, if they're gardeners, whatever it is, whatever mm. the person's passion is when they're really focused and yeah. there's nothing else that's mattering. Even if you're like building a bicycle, mm. and that's your state. You're 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 in it. You know you're gonna feel it. Mm. That's what mm. I believe. I believe uh, you don't have to be this or that. It's whatever, whatever you're into that that you connect with. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you. Graffiti, Which is you know all the tags. I was just gonna track. say yeah. Shh, those dudes, those dudes, I can imagine are like skateboarders. I watch the skateboarders sometimes, and I'm like, how? How is that even yeah. possible? The level of intelligence these people have. Yeah, the b-boying as well. B-boying? Are you kidding me? I, I attempted to be a b-boyer when I was young, and I could rap way better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I stick to microphones and words. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we all had a crack at one of the <laughs> three disciplines, and we knew which side our bread was buttered on, to say yeah. the least. Even, even for me, even producing, like I could produce, you know, I can make a beat in five minutes on Reason, or, you know, because I've been using Reason for 20 years, but I'm not a producer. I'm an I'm a MC. I'm a rap artist. You know what I mean? Like, I make beats sometimes for fun. If I'm not writing lyrics, but I still want to be creative, I'll go make a beat. Um, but I would rather give that beat making to somebody who's pa as passionate and as talented as, it, as I am with writing the songs, lyrical part. Um, and you've been on tour with, so Alanis Morissette, that's your um, missus, that's your wife? It sure is, man, yeah. And you've been on tour with her. You've done a lot of shows and a lot of uh, a lot Yeah, of in, uh, in 2012, I put out a record called Iron Horse Running. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to do the opening tour with her around the world, which was a really amazing learning experience. And, um, you know, at times it was a seated only crowd. So that was always an interesting experience as a rap artist where I want to like break out. But everyone's kind of like sitting and I'm like, okay. Um, but it was really fun. And it was a dream come true to, uh, she, I would go on stage first to open. She'd be in the back with the baby. And then I would run out and I'd run, I'd finish. Thank you all so much. And then I'd run back, get the baby. She'd come out 
and crush the show. And then sometimes she'd come out during my set and she'd sing her parts from the songs. And, uh, you know, when I, when I look back at that, you know, one of the coolest experiences I think about it is that as a hip hop artist, there were times where I'm performing in front of 5,000 people in Israel and Tel Aviv. And just to sit back and be like, man, I took hip hop and I rap all around the world because, you know, Alanis was like, yeah, open for me. And I was like, wow, that's cool. I'll do it. Um, so that was a really a beautiful thing. I, I, I personally think, you know. Yeah, for sure. That's like some like family relay of like going on stage back into the dressing room, looking yeah. after your kid, you, you know, revolving doors, I can imagine. I can imagine that's quite a, quite a hectic schedule. Well, you know, when putting the baby to sleep on a tour bus after like, you know, being on tour for two months is, you know, definitely, there's definitely some stories, you know. <laughs> yeah. Put a baby I mean, to sleep on a tour bus. And, you know, in Europe, in London, they got those double decker buses. Yeah. They don't have those in America. What? I mean, yeah. I, maybe it's because of tunnels or I don't I've never, they don't have the double deckers like they do in Europe uh, for tours. So, you know, upstairs would be the baby's room and downstairs and. We like lived on the bus with the baby in school, whatever. What's it like as two um, creatives? Because, you know, songwriters being being together. Yeah. Um, when when we do collaborate together, it's a, it's a wonderful, peaceful harmony. harmony you know, it's an, and, you know, she's so talented that literally we did a song called Snow Angel. And I had, I had the beat ready and she was walking by the studio and I'm like, Hey, you want to check out this beat? And she's like, listen to it for 25 seconds. And I was like, Oh, I have a hook for it. And I look at, at the time, his name is Jesse Malloy, the producer. This is for the record, um, Wild Man song. And I was like, Jesse's like, we both had to do like a double take. Like, okay. Put the headphones on her. She sings the chorus perfectly, beautifully. And then walks out and we're both just like, okay. Wow. Mm. There's some wonder, there's some Wonder Woman shit. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it, yeah, it's it's an honor, it's a blessing, it's, it's every, you know everything you can imagine it would be. And it's also tough sometimes for me if I'm attempting to record her. I'm not really an engineer. I'm, I'll rap. I record my rapping, and so that could get frustrating if I'm attempting to do the recording because I, I I'm like ah, I don't know why it's peaking and. So uh, we've made, we've made an agreement that I, I don't record her anymore. So we'll hire. I love her. that, dude. I've been there, <laughs> and I'm I'm sitting there like, man, I'm used to like underground hip hop recording with a a muffled microphone in a closet with pantyhose, and now yeah. I have like a eight time Grammy winner freaking singing on my mic. I'm like, uh, uh, like make the EQ better with a little reverb and take this top off that and this and that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's some madness, yeah. So, I mean, some relationships have, you know, more kind of mundane arguments like who's doing the washing up. You guys are on some, like, yeah. there's too much compression on this. I'm distorting. Yeah, Put the limiter yeah. on. That's the number one issue, too. It's like, I'm distorting. I can't hear. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> totally. I only record about this volume when I'm rapping. You know, like, I don't get much louder than this. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and what can be seen as an incompetency actually is just they're two different worlds. Totally different worlds, yeah. Go on, shout the shout the album again, bro. When's it coming out? Today, check it out, man. Appreciate you having me. And um to all the Killer Keller fans out there, my name is Soli. And to all the Soli fans out there, check out Killer Keller, one of the best beatboxers out and uh yeah. favorite podcast. So thank you for having me and I appreciate it. My brother, listen, you're always welcome. Hey, look, next time we're going to, we'll have to link up and do this properly. We'll do it, when I say properly, we'll do it together. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. When I'm in uh, your, your neck of the woods, you count on a text coming from me for sure. Yeah, baby. Tea's right. in a pot, drinks in the fridge. You know it. Yeah, man. Can't wait. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Soli, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Don't forget, check out the album. It's on its way, all right? It's already out, in fact. Get your skates on. Get on the Spotify and check it out. Yeah. Soul Line the House, Killer Keller podcast, out like in was out fashion. Yeah.